Hello everybody and welcome to the next video in our series of practice journal entries. This is video number five and it's also the second part of our adjusting journal entry discussion. With this video we're going to be talking about the alternative method for handling prepaids or deferrals. So for one final video we're going to be talking about the rules for journal entries just as a reminder. The debits are always found on the left side and they're always going to come first. The credits are always found on the right side and they're going to be coming after all of the debits. Remember that there can be a different quantity of debit or credit entries but the total dollars of all debits must equal the total dollars of all credits. So now we'll go through the reminder of the normal balance rules. Your debit accounts, remember the dead mnemonic, your debit accounts include expenses, assets, and dividends. They're increased with debits and they're decreased with credits. Your credit accounts include, this is the clerk mnemonic, include your liabilities, revenues, and common stock. Another reminder on the special rules for adjusting journal entries. Remember that the adjusting entries themselves will never include cash. There will be a cash payment that happens either before the adjusting entry or after it, but the actual adjusting entry itself will not include cash. Also, the adjusting entries will always include an income statement account, which would be either revenue or expense, and they will include a balance sheet account, which would either be an asset or a liability. Finally, we have the two main categories of adjusting journal entries, and under each of those two, they each have their own two types of adjusting journal entries. So the accruals, the adjusting entry occurs before the cash transaction, and then later on there will be a cash transaction. These would include your accrued expenses, also known as the accrued liability, and your accrued revenues, also known as the accrued asset. The second main category would be your deferrals or prepaids. In these adjusting entries, which are going to be the main topic of this discussion, this video, you would have the deferrals or prepaids, the cash occurs before the adjusting entry, and then later on we're going to have an actual adjusting entry. These would include things like your prepaid or deferred expenses and your unearned or deferred revenues. Now the one thing I want to mention here is, as I said, the prepaids and deferrals are going to be the main topic of this video because they're going to be the main ones that are different from what we learned in video number four with the, the method one of the journal entries. So the other thing with these prepaid or deferral adjusting entries is that the method that's chosen it doesn't just impact the adjusting entry, it also impacts how the original purchase took place, or the prepayment. It, it impacts how that was set up, which will then impact how the adjusting entry needs to be recorded to end up with the proper account balances at the end of all of our adjusting entries. So what happens here with these prepaids is the idea is you're, you're either prepaying for something that's eventually going to be an expense, it's an asset for whatever's not used or an expense for what's used, or you've received a prepayment that will eventually be revenue, but early on will be uh, just an unearned revenue liability. So the point is, the amount that's actually recognized as either revenue or expense will make its way to the income statement account, with the unrecognized portion being either asset or liability, depending on the type of entry we're talking about. Now the question with the two methods is, how do you do it? Do you put it all in the balance sheet account first and then move the portion as it's recognized over the income statement accounts? Or do you move it all to the income statement accounts first, revenue or expense, and then back out the portion that really hasn't been earned as revenue or incurred as an expense? And that's where we get to these two different methods. Method one that we talked about in video number four, the standard method, it reports the full prepaid amount as either an asset or a liability, depending on which one it is, and then only the portion that's been earned as a revenue or incurred as an expense 
gets moved over to those income statement accounts. That's the standard method, which seems to be more logical because things start as an asset or liability. They're unused, and then when they do get used, they move over to the income statement. Method two is the alternative method that we're going to focus on in this video. In these situations, you report the full prepaid amount as either revenue or expense, and then the only time you're going to move something through an adjusting entry is if there's a portion that hasn't been earned as revenue or hasn't been incurred as expense. In that case, you'll move it back to the balance sheet account, the asset or the liability. So that's the slight difference with this method. Now, this method is generally used when it's believed that most of this prepayment will end up being recorded as revenue or expense that period anyways. So you just put it there and there's only a little bit you have to move out at the end of the period. Let's take a look at the transactions. Now what I want to throw out right off the bat is that your accruals, whether it be an accrued expense or accrued revenue, there is no difference for between method one and method two. There is no method, it's just the same entry. It's only the prepayments or deferrals that have this alternative entry. That's the key thing I want to point out. So this was our accrued expense entry for salaries. You may recall this from video four that the employees worked for 12 days of the 14 day period. By the time we get to the end of this year, payday is going to be sometime next year. They've earned $15,000 for this work for this portion of the year. So we need to record it. We need to accrue the salaries expense. Again, there's only one method for this. It would be a debit to salaries expense and a credit to salaries payable, which increases both of these accounts. So we're going to use their normal balance to increase them. Expenses have a normal debit balance. Liabilities have a normal credit balance. So we use those normal balances to increase both accounts. Again, this method, there's only one method for this adjusting entry. Later on, the cash payment will take place when we do actually pay off the amount that's owed. The transaction number two is another accrued expense. This deals with interest. And again, it's going to be identical to video number four. The interest for the first year totaled $1,200, even though it will not be paid until the next year. The entry is again going to be a debit to the expense and a credit to the payable. The only difference with this entry is that it's interest expense and interest payable, $1,200. And we have another entry. This is accrued revenue in this situation. They provided service to a customer in the amount of $750, but they haven't billed for them yet. Again, it's an accrual. There's only one method for those. We're going to debit the asset, accounts receivable, to increase it, and credit the revenue to show that we've earned that money. By the way, this would be the same entry as if you billed for the service to begin with. In that case, you wouldn't need an adjusting entry because you've already billed for it. Now we're starting to get into the prepaids and deferred expenses, and I said that's where we generally see method one or method two, but I also said that method two is generally used when there's a reason to believe that most or all of the cost of that prepayment will be recorded as expense in that same period. With this transaction number four, we're dealing with depreciation of long-term assets, so in this case, three years ago, they bought equipment for $100,000. It's expected to last 10 years and be used equally over each of those 10 years. So they depreciate the same amount each year. 100000 divided by 10 years is 10000 So this is a prepaid deferred expense entry. But what I want to mention here is that this is one of the exceptions where even though it's a prepayment, there really is no different method one or method two. And the reason is that there's certainly no reason to believe we're going to use up all of this amount in period one. It's going to be 10 years before this is all used up. 
So we don't want to record it all as an expense right off the bat. So the initial entry would have been to debit equipment for 100000 credit cash for 100000 to show the payment. The adjusting journal entry for every year, this you may recall this from video four, we're debiting depreciation expense to increase it, and we're crediting the accumulated depreciation contra asset. In video four, we talked about how that one basically offsets the asset's value. So it's a contra asset. It has the opposite normal balance of an asset itself. Therefore, it has a normal credit balance. We're increasing this account with a credit, but later on the balance sheet, we'll see that that actually reduces the asset's net book value. Again, we talked about that in video four. This is the journal entry, the adjusting journal entry that we would do each period. Nothing special with it. It's no method one or no method two. Now let's talk about the first entry that does have a difference. And this is transaction number five with supplies. And there's a prepayment for these supplies. So notice that they're going to give you a few different amounts. They started the year with $1,000 of supplies. They purchased an additional 1500 throughout the year, but they ended the year with 500 in supplies. Now, if we do the math there, we know that we had $2,500 of supplies we could have used up. We ended up with 500, so we must have used the other 2000. Now, for this first entry, which, by the way, this would have taken place at some point earlier in the year. They didn't give us the exact date, so I just put 1231, but generally that would have happened earlier on in the year. Under Method 2, we would have reported this full amount that we've purchased as supplies expense right off the bat. Debit supplies expense to increase it, and we'd credit cash to reduce it. Now, notice that's the 1500 that we purchased. We assume that any purchases from a previous period would have gone through the same entry. Therefore, everything hit supplies expense. And the only time you're going to move something back to supplies is through the adjusting journal entry and only for the amount that remains unused. So everything initially went to supplies expense. Now we're having to credit supplies expense to reduce it for the amount that we really didn't use, and then that money goes back into the supplies asset where it will remain until it's used. So we debit supplies for 500, and now it's back in the supplies entry, supplies account. Inventory is going to be the same basic approach. The company started the year with $10,500 of inventory. They purchased $30,000 of inventory throughout the year. They ended up selling 35000 Notice they had 40500 but they sold 35000 which makes sense because they ended the year with 5500 This is, again, a prepaid deferred expense. The initial entry would have debited cost of goods sold for 30000 credited cash for 30000 to show the payment. We're reporting it all as the expense right off the bat. The adjusting journal entry is to move some portion out of the expense, credit cost of goods sold to reduce that expense by 5500 and put it into the inventory account for 5500 debit inventory to increase it. Rent expense would be the same thing, transaction number seven. We paid $12,000 in rent for the period of July 1st through June 30th. This is a prepaid deferred expense. Now, the date is kind of wrong here. Whenever we did purchase this, which I guess was July 1st, we would debit rent expense right off the bat for $12,000, credit cash for $12,000 to show the amount we've actually paid for. Again, that's assuming it's all going to rent expense even though we know that not all of it's going to be used this period. At the end of the period, we have the adjusting entry to move the portion that we have not used 
out of rent expense with a credit to reduce it and into the prepaid rent asset for 6000 to increase that asset. It'll sit there because it hasn't been used. And now we're talking about prepaid insurance. Another basically identical situation. It's prepaid expense. In this case, we had $300 per month for insurance. By December 1st, December 31st, the end of the period, they still had seven months that had not been recorded but had been used up. We want to record the adjusting entry, but remember, since we're under Method 2, we need to adjust the portion that has not been used. Seven months have been used, so five months have not been used. Five months times $300 per month, we're going to see 1500 has not been used. But Method 2 requires us to debit the insurance expense for the full amount, credit cash to show the payment, and the adjusting entry is to pull back the portion of the insurance expense that we really did not use yet this period. So we debit prepaid insurance to add it back into the asset, credit insurance expense to reduce it, and we're good to go there. And the final adjusting entry we'll talk about is the revenue side. It's still a deferred revenue, the unearned or deferred revenue. In this case, the company had previously collected $5,000 in advance for services they were going to provide this year. At the end of the year, they had earned 3000 of that amount, which means they did not earn the other 2000 So the initial entry, when they collected the money, would have debited cash to increase it for 5000 credited revenue to increase that for 5000 That, again, that assumes that, hey, maybe they're going to earn all that revenue that period. But at the end of the period, we find out, no, they did not. So we're debiting revenue to decrease it for the amount we did not really earn. And the credit then goes to unearned revenue, which is a liability for that same 2000 to show that, hey, we owe the customer something. So that should give you a good look into the adjusting entries under method two, the alternative method. Hopefully this has helped to clarify some of these. I just want to mention that practice will help you considerably with these journal entries, whether it be the adjusting journal entries or regular ones. We will have additional videos talking about more journal entry examples. These examples will become progressively more complicated as we go through them, and there are going to be different classifications of journal entries. We've covered the adjusting entries. The next video is actually the closing entries. So thank you for your time, and I look forward to talking to you in our next video.